Hello, welcome to my journey. In my last video we spoke about diabetes and the effect that sugar and insulin has on the body. Yeah, so I can tell you how down and depressed I felt when I was first diagnosed with um, the disease. I felt as if I was sliding down a slippery slope. All that was left for me was prolonged pain and despair. I really and truly felt that way. I felt, you know, in, I felt ashamed. I was, I was even talking to my friend the other day and I was explaining to her how badly I was feeling, you know, about letting other people know. It became like a stigma to me. I was trying to analyse why do we as human beings feel this way, embarrassed about something that I can't even help. So I decided that this was a good thing to maybe make a video about because quite a lot of us are ill, quite a lot of us have different illnesses and we don't talk about it. Maybe if we did speak about, you know, things more openly then, you know, other people will recognise like, oh, but that is happening to me. This is happening to me. Maybe I should do this or maybe I should do that. So that's why I'm here talking about how I, how I felt. But as I said, when I was first diagnosed, you know i just felt so badly in a way that is what drove me to try and find something to help myself rather than going and taking i think what is it called metaphor metformin um the drugs that they usually give you um i mean i had that when i was in the hospital and i felt so ill i was vomiting all over the place the first day I took it, I vomited up buckets, you know, sorry to be talking about that, but it's exactly what happened. I literally vomited up buckets. And the second night, same thing. Third night, same thing. And then it was like, mm, no, I'm not having any more of this. It's not making me feel any better. So therefore it couldn't really be helping me. That's why I decided that I need to find something else. So. I prayed and I prayed to my maker. I asked for direction and help in finding, you know, a diet that I can realistically stick to. And lo and behold, I found this lecturer. Well, he said he was a, um, he was a kidney doctor and also he sees lots of people coming into his office with um, lots of complication that came from diabetes and he was talking about the foods that we should eat or not eat and he mentioned the ketogenic diet and he was saying that if the problem is actually sugar then we shouldn't eat sugar to me that resonated so deeply with me within me because for years I've been going around telling you know my friends and family that I don't think sugar is good for us sugar is bad especially women who are having menopause you know and complaining about being hot and, and I would say to them take note of what you're drinking what are you eating and you know and they will say like they'll be drinking maybe fizzy drinks throughout the day they'll be eating cakes and you know things like that and I would say to them well maybe cut down on it or cut it out and see what happens and you know they will come back to me and say to me that you know what that really has helped they don't get so much of the attack of hot flushes anymore so from a long time ago I've been saying and I've been feeling for my own self that sugar is not good because I mean with me it started off with me feeling bloated sometimes I would be in agony you know that is when I would eat you know back in the day I would eat ice cream and one cup of ice cream wasn't good, good enough for me I'd probably have to because I was a sugar junkie sugar and salt to be fair you know if there was salt in it table salt I was there if there was sugar count me in but then I started realizing that after eating sweet salt like I said, the ice cream, that my belly would hurt and I would start being bloated. And then it went to, after having dinner, like eating rice and pasta, and I noticed that the bloating would take place. But then instead of it being like 
four hours after eating a certain thing I noticed that it will come down to like about an hour 50 minutes after eating the rice or whatever my belly would you know start cramping up I would feel sick sometimes I had constipation sometimes I had diarrhea you know and I'd go to the doctor and I'd ask the doctor well what is wrong with me and because they didn't actually know what was wrong with me well I didn't even know what was wrong with me they put it down to well they gave it a label a title and they call it irritable bowel syndrome so that didn't help me it still left me in agony and to work out for myself what was going wrong with my body so yeah and when the doctor mentioned about the sugar and if sugar is the problem cut it out then I knew then then that that diet was definitely for me so instead of sitting there imagining a life of um, need a pricks and and insulin injection which was a road that I did not want to go down I decided that I was going to actually listen to what this doctor was saying that was better for me rather than having to go down the chemical route in the beginning it was it wasn't it was easy but I had my days whereby it was like I was going mad you know I just wanted normal food I just wanted to have rice and peas. I just wanted to have just norm well, normal, what everybody else was eating. I just wanted to be normal again. You know, I felt like Amy Winehouse said in that song, like a penny rolling up the wall, but I didn't give in to it. With the help of my children, I managed to make the transition and change my diet more or less completely. At the beginning, there was a bit of, it was a bit of trial and error obviously. I used to eat grains and black eye beans, corn, and I had to learn to also cut them out of my diet. What I noticed was I didn't have to actually sleep with sweets at the side of my bed anymore. I didn't have to walk around or my daughter didn't have to make sure all the time, Mom, have you got sweet have you got a sweet in your bag? you know take this so don't forget to carry that with you um to date i went to see my doctor and i handed in um a urine sample and each time i've been now for the past three months they have told me there is no sign of glucose in it so i was so elated so happy you can imagine you know being told that there's no glucose in your urine sample. I would say though that I don't feel it like it's completely gone yet but I know that I'm getting there. I know for them they're saying that it's good and you know whatever but I don't want to just go back now and start eating the old things that I used to eat. I don't want to you know fall back in my old habits you know of making orange juice diluting it and then still sweetening it after you know that sounds mad but it is what I used to do I know we all got our own little madness that we do I don't want to go back eating loads of Chinese food and you know things like that fizzy drinks cola champagne I want to stick with this diet for some time to come and I'll see where it goes but um, for now you know after learning quite a few different things to cook I find that it's becoming more and more easier especially for my daughter because in the beginning it was a headache it was like oh my god what can I give mum to eat you know I was like oh my god what can I eat you know so together we managed to do some quite really nice meals you know that the whole household you know enjoy we're all on this journey now you know not just me um, my younger daughter she had also put on some weight and now I understand the working a little bit of the body so now I understand about the insulin you know you, you know usually you will see a person that is big and you will instantly you will think oh that person's greedy or that person eats a lot that person eats way too much you know but now I'm understanding it's not always gluttony you know that makes a person big it could also stem from the fact that there is too much glucose and and too much insulin remaining in the blood for far too long because the cells are not functioning properly 
and that in itself could make a person fat and like I said before the insulin running around the body like that and unbeknownst to you could destroy your nerves in your belly and in everywhere everywhere anywhere that it touch apparently it seems like it just destroys it and remember that I am not a doctor I am a researcher like I said love the research you know I love knowledge don't take my word for it you go and research yourself find out what insulin and glucose does to your body so okay i'm gonna let you go bye